Hello, I'm Dr. Joseph Keneally, the Secretary General Designate of the International College of Dentists. The ICD was conceived 100 years ago by its founders, Japanese dentist Dr. Tsurukichi Okumura and American dentist Dr. Louis Otafi, as a way to share dental information around the world. Over time, the college has become a premier international honor society, promoting the best in dental education, research, leadership, and humanitarian service. With this, the second webinar presentation of ICD Online, the college returns to its roots, sharing dental information across borders without undue influence from political bodies. Today, we will have 40 minutes of presentations with 15 to 20 minutes left at the end for questions and answers. We will not be recognizing the raised hand Zoom function, but we will monitor the questions section of your Zoom screen. Questions will be screened and forwarded to the moderator if deemed appropriate. The ICD cannot answer questions regarding the decisions and recommendations of other dental organizations, and we will not comment upon or recommend specific products, services, or companies. The opinions and facts expressed by our panel and moderator are their own, and they in no way represent official positions of the International College of Dentists. I will now turn, turn our program over to our moderator. Dr. Jonathan Schenken is a pediatric dentist on faculty at Boston University in health policy, health services research, and pediatric dentistry. Dr. Schenken is a former vice president of the American Dental Association, and he continues to be an ADA media spokesperson on pediatric dentistry. Dr. Schenken has extensive international experience in oral health during his time at the National Institutes of Health and as a former Fulbright scholar in Belarus. Dr. Schenken was one of the earlier advisors to the leadership of the American Dental Association on how to manage dentistry's response to coronavirus. Dr. Schenken. Thank you, Dr. Keneally. Uh, welcome, everybody, to what I hope is going to be a stimulating session for all of us. Uh, there's been a, a tremendous amount of discussion within the United States and internationally about the response of dentistry uh, to the coronavirus. Back in late December, the World Health Organization received word from China that uh, they had identified several cases of a pneumonia-type disease in China. And since then, we've now had nearly 7 million reported cases worldwide of coronavirus uh, that's affected the world uh, in, in varying ways. Uh, we've seen outbreaks in different parts of the world, and we've, we're seeing developing outbreaks uh, that continue. What we haven't seen is an identified dental office transmission of coronavirus. This may be due to the standard precautions that most of us uh, take in dental settings, and we are probably one of, if not the most, infection control focused healthcare disciplines in the world. Um, we have with us today two unique people. Uh, the chief dental officers of Italy and Germany, two countries that have had very different experiences so far with coronavirus, and two countries who have replied to the, to the issue very differently. Uh, we've asked them to provide uh, pre presentations to us that would educate all of us about what their specific country experiences have been, how they have responded, uh, whether it be through dental education, uh, or through the practice of dentistry, uh, precautions that they're, they're taking uh, practice by practice, and what they plan in the future. Um, we're going to start our presentation today first with uh, Dr. Corrado Paganelli, um, who's, gonna, who's the Chief Dental Officer of Italy, uh, and take it away, Dr. Paganelli. Thank you very much. It's an honor, and so I would like to start a very short presentation on what might be an Italian perspective on COVID, but really concentrated on interaction between myself and uh, uh, Sebastian about Germany. So, of course, I would like to present something concerning uh, Italy, about dentist activity and our school, comparison among dental schools in, in Europe, and then decision and recommendations, and maybe some ideas for phase three. So maybe what we would really like to underline is the fact that, of course, you can imagine, Italy is not homogeneous, but in general, Europe is extremely varied in terms of policy, data collection in particular, and so 
there is a regional heterogeneity that has to be taken into account. As you might understand clearly, COVID is still under constant change in understanding. And so we have to double check how we get information. So of course, uh, uh, what you regularly see updated in the CDC about the key points are exactly what we have in our countries too. So what you see listed here is what you know very well and it's valid throughout the world. So what about Italy? I am based in Brescia, that is less than 80 kilometers away from the location of the first outbreak in Italy. Brescia has 200,000 inhabitants in a province of 1,200,000 inhabitants. But Lombardy, that you see here on a long chart of what is Italy, is the gray area, 10 million inhabitants with very rich in terms of uh, economy, not so far away from other regions in terms of uh, health expenditure and population needs. What I'm going to present now is going to be clearly uh, a source of information that I recommend is a WHO uh, document that was recently published and is covering all the aspects of what I think is needed in order to understand what happened. So uh, you maybe remember that at the end of January, two tourists, Chinese tourists were hospitalized in Italy, immediately after 31st of January, Italy declares state of emergency, closed frontiers to, to China, and slowly everything developed and we ended up in 9th of March, at the end of this slide, lockdown. So if you compare this with what happened in Germany, you understand clearly that we are 10 to 20 days ahead of what happened in Germany. So of course, we had all the mistakes that is clearly done by the first coming into this. This list of events is clearly coming into your memory because then all the countries in Europe passed through the same sequence. Everybody said, no, COVID is not coming into our country. Suddenly the first case, isolation, lockdown, and then coming back to normal life. So uh, here is the confirmed cases plotted against what is the national lockdown that is clearly very early in terms of numbers but with a huge consequence in terms of diffusion. So what you see here is clearly defined in terms of northern Italy and it is so even at the end of April. So even if some spread as happened, the main area is still what was starting with. This also in terms of death. The comparison with the previous year shows clearly that only in the northern part there was a change dramatic and for this reason, I am extremely satisfied to say that, uh, of course, in a seven day moving average, not in a day by day, but you clearly say, see that the movement 
of cases per day is decreasing fast and luckily also the daily death. Of course, there are still some numbers that are changing because Saturdays, Sundays are completely different from the other days in terms of what you get. So I prefer to show always a seven day moving average. What is the most important data, I think, is the peak in ICU beds capacity in Lombardy and in, in Italy. It's exactly the same day and you see that the smooth change in occupancy is relatively relatively providing us space for confidence in an easy future. Now what about dentist activity? Uh, there was no law imposing to shut down dental practice. There was a, a huge problem concerning PPE, so all the dentists in Italy has donated their own PPE for the hospitals and they worked voluntarily to provide information to the population and thus, of course, shut down the practice. Despite this, 16 dentists died. Hospitals on the other side were required to reduce the activity to unreliable treatments and management of emergency in order to avoid patients to go to the general emergency department for anything else that was not COVID. This is really important in my thoughts. My school reduced immediately uh, postgraduate and undergraduate. And we started again on the 20th of May. So just 10 days ago with the reopening, we have observed a lot of aspects that might be relevant for the reopening in other countries too. So we are discussing extensively those aspects with all our colleagues. On another aspect, uh, our school was providing emergency service to the community. So uh, against what I said before, PPE was not a problem for us. Uh, in our dental school, I mean, because hospital and general administration were extremely prone to give us what was needed in order to be sure that we had no problem. On the other side, I must admit that psychology of our help was needed, not only in terms of help to the operators, for the emergency, but also the patients with a distance contact by phone. This was also uh, an interest in all the dental schools. So you see behind me what is uh, International Federation of Dental Educators and Associations and the Forum for uh, um, Deans at the European level. So we have extensively considered with questionnaires, what could be the changes in the management of the school immediately and on structural changes that are needed for the future. And this is also felt around Europe by the other deans. So this is what is, I think, a thought for future we have to consider ICD also as a think tank, as it has always been, a place where uh, we can uh, discuss this type of aspects that are not only related to education, they are related also to the scenario where a dentist is working, and we will see it further on. What about uh, 
government? Well, uh, as I said already, Italy decided to stop uh, flights, direct flights from anywhere in China. But uh, we are in a world where it is very difficult to consider all the side and parallel ways to obtain our results. So a lot of passengers were reaching Italy in any case, where they were scrutinized and checked, but in any case, this was present. Now the pressure is to go back to normal and we are involved in uh, epidemiological screening of groups, of workers, residents, in view of going back to normal activities. We have some very good indications for dental activity in, uh, by our Minister of Health. It was uh, immediately approved without any delay and uh, uh, similarly also the hygienists have defined what they feel it is needed in their work. So a few words concerning uh, uh, phase three. So my consideration in view of what uh, Sebastian will say also about dental practice only. Uh, we are discussing rules for going back to normal, but please consider that if there are uh, no promotions in university around Europe, this means that also uh, our students are looking at dentistry in a different way. We, we are aware of this, so we have to consider that uh, moving uh, for the last miles of personal mobility uh, in order to reduce uh, uh, difficulties in social distancing in urban transport is not only a problem of how we move, but we have to conceptualize the way we are thinking a new dental perspective in the future. And I think that ICD has this potential for the future. Uh, it's not only air conditioning, air ventilation, one way out, one way out in for the patient that is changing the perspective of the single practice. In Italy, what we are experiencing is default of the group practice in favor of the single practice, single owned practice. So um, optics and interaction due to students, students by technology is not only what we are going to apply to dental education, what we have to induce our patients to consider that technology is enhancing this. And I think that this type of experience has to change the way we are looking at the entire world, not only our single province. So planning ahead for going back to any activity uh, has to be a collaborative. So uh, educational opportunities using technology and as learning like this uh, Zoom to hold a webinar to everybody is a way, but I think that regionalized events also are important. And I strongly support the fact that we are active and we are available for this initiative. So it was very nice by Jonathan to invite me in this way and to spread this idea. Of course, uh, um, dentistry has always been in this view, but what the people have as a fear is in inducing us to consider this as a mandatory new way to consider dentistry. So this type of webinars, even in small groups, is something that is relevant. So I think I finished, and I think that everybody remembers that even the asteroids seem to, to come to the Earth one month ago with a surgical mask, if you remember. So uh, I'm joking now, of course, uh, 
please see this as a change of habits. Trust me, this is Italy, it's not UK, is a superordinate queue, is a line in front of a general purpose store with people that have fear. So they don't see social distancing as a law, but as something that they feel needed. So of course, we have changed our life. We have started smart working, maybe with some back pain because of a different way of uh, behaving. But I think that we have to find correct sources and I invite everybody to look after WHO and FDI for this. And I think that I have covered all my aspects in time. So I see that Jonathan is not taking me like mad. So I would like just to say that uh, Joe has done a wonderful job till now in ICD and I would really like to uh, be able to use his own words in the same way. Thank you very much. Sorry to be running at the end, but it was the last part of my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Paganelli. Uh, uh, we have a couple of questions for you, but we'll, we will wait until the, uh, the uh, conclusion of uh, Dr. Zillow's presentation. Uh, if you do have questions, uh, please feel free to post them in the, in the chat room and we'll, we'll ask those questions when we're completed with uh, both presentations. Next is uh, Dr. Sebastian Ziller, who is the Chief Dental Officer of Germany, and he will provide us with some background about their experiences. Dr. Ziller? Yes, uh, I want to say also hello to everybody. And I want to say thank you to uh, the ICD uh, for the opportunity to present some experiences from Germany, from our country, and how the German dentists try to manage the serious COVID situation. And first, I will give um, a brief overview to the epidemiology, and then I will come to the dental aspects, uh, including some economic explanations and maybe a view uh, to the future. So, um, on this uh, slide, uh, you can see the development uh, of the COVID-19 spread in Germany during the last six months. Uh, as uh, Corrado uh, said, uh, the first case was observed in Bavaria uh, in the end of January, and now we have nearly 186,000 uh, confirmed cases nationwide. And uh, if you look at the comparison between Italy and Germany, we see the difference between the death cases and uh, one reason for that is that Germany had uh, more time to prepare on the pandemic, as, as uh, Corrado said. Another reason could be the high density of uh, hospitals in, in our country and maybe also uh, the different uh, statistics. Uh, the first um, COVID outbreaks were observed uh, in the south uh, and the western parts of Germany, uh, coronavirus hotspots where small cities in, in Bavaria and in North Rhine, Westphalia and Baden-Württemberg because of uh, mass gatherings, uh, winter holiday returnees from Austria and the return of uh, business travelers from China. And also now the main COVID-19 cases concentrate in the south and west of Germany. And with the exception of Munich, the both uh, cities of Hamburg and, and Berlin, uh, where I live, have relatively uh, low COVID rates uh, if you look at the cases per 100,000 inhabitants. And, and reasons uh, for the good outbreak control are uh, that uh, we, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, have a early contact tracing, a strictly quarantine and managing and uh, interrupting the chains of uh, infection quickly. So now in Germany, uh, the proportion of, of death in, uh, in COVID-19 cases is estimated by 4.7%. Uh, and the peak of the daily reported COVID uh, death 
uh, was in the middle of April, there was a peak. And currently we observe around uh, 10 death cases per day uh, nationwide. And the proportion cases per uh, 100 inhabitants showed concentration infection of the infections in, in the south, in Bavaria. As you see, the, 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 the deep blue uh, federal state of, of Bavaria uh, in the middle uh, of the slide. Uh, as in other countries, uh, nearly 85% of the death, uh, but only 20% of the COVID cases are 70 years and, and older. And uh, as my Italian uh, friend Corrado said, uh, we had the luck uh, that uh, Italy was before uh, us infected. Uh, and so we, we had more time to prepare. And uh, since the middle of the March, we had, uh, after the uh, terrible pictures from, from uh, Bergamo, Italy, in nationwide uh, quarantine with a restrictive ban on, on personal contacts, and you see on the slide the main the lockdown measures. And, and with respect uh, to my Italian friend and the colleagues uh, and the Italian people, I must say, a lot of Germany's relatively good performance was down to luck. And uh, so we had the advantage that we had more time to prepare. We saw the terrible images uh, from Italy before the wave come to us and Germany reacted very quickly and very strictly uh, to those pictures uh, with the testing and uh, track and, and trace. Um, you see also after six weeks, uh, since the beginning of May, we have the reopening. That means uh, stepwise we go back to our daily activities in the middle of May, we have a reopening of, of non-essential shops and schools partly. Uh, we have a reopening of restaurants outside with uh, social distance uh, regulations. Since the end of May, uh, traveling is allowed in Germany uh, for holidays. And uh, since uh, the 2nd of June, also gyms and bars are uh, reopened. Um, in Germany, we have uh, federal states, uh, so-called Länder. Uh, and they have the main uh, competencies and the political power uh, for the health sector. And during the complete shutdown, there was no nationwide regulation to close dental practices relating to COVID-19. So the profession of dentists were classified as uh, relevant for the system. And only in two regions, uh, regional states, we, we have restrictions of allowing only dental emergency treatment, but only for a very, a very short period. And um, we observed, of course, a closure of dental practices uh, during the peak of the pandemic, because we have a, a massive shortage, shortage of uh, personal protective equipment, special, especially masks and uh, also many, many patients cancel the appointments on the peak of uh, the pandemic. So what we, what we do uh, during uh, uh, the pandemic and also now is uh, that the German dental uh, authorities um, published uh, recommendations for, for the risk management of the dental practices. Uh, we uh, publish standard operating procedures, hygiene uh, recommendations, information about economic support for the practices by our government and many, many other informations uh, regularly updated uh, on our website. And the aim is of course, support the colleagues why the critical situation and give them practical advices to uh, manage the uh, critical uh, situation. And, and here you see on the next slide, um, only as one example, the standard equipment uh, recommendations regarding the protection measures um, of the dental team during uh, the patient contact. And in addition, uh, in addition to the personal protective equipment, uh, the antiviral antisepsis uh, for the patient's mouth before the dental treatment is recommended uh, the so-called pre-wins and uh, but also on this field we need more scientific investigation and, and evidence in the future but it is very important uh, for for the run of our uh, dental uh, practices 
But uh, the COVID-19 crisis also shone a spotlight on some deep uh, deficiencies uh, on our health system. Some of the other countries have the same experiences. I suppose one major issue was the acute shortage of uh, PPE, especially the masks, and especially a massive shortage of filtering face piece, the FFP2 and FFP3 masks, at least uh, as a start and at the, at the peak of the corona storm. And uh, like other countries, Germany was forced uh, to search the world for increasingly limited supplies, uh, just as its hospitals needed uh, uh, them at most. And yes, we discovered uh, how dependent we are on China uh, for the supply of masks and, and PPE. And uh, I think this is a, one negative side of uh, the economic uh, globalization. And um, economic is. Uh, also, the next keyword to my uh, in my presentation. Let me show you some uh, economic influences of the COVID-19 pandemic on the dental practices in Germany. In April, um, the German Dental Association launched an online survey among practice owners, and first results from over 2,700 uh, questionnaires show that. On a national average, uh, the practices estimated a decline in the workload uh, between the beginning of February and at the beginning of April at more than 50%. And uh, the estimates vary depending uh, on the COVID incidence of infection and, and also uh, on federal state specific regulations, but it was a, a massive uh, a decline massive economic burden and um, the second point to see that the practice had to reduce the consultation times of more than uh, on one third in average but in this time the practices remain accessible for the patients nationwide and you see also that nearly half of the practices had switched uh, the business to uh, emergency treatment at the peak of, uh, of the pandemic because of the shortage of uh, PPE and uh, um, the uh, cancelled appointments uh, by the patients. Uh, one, uh, on the national average, over two thirds of the practices had to make use uh, of the so called short time work compensation. Uh, this is a compensation is this a special offer from the German Federal Employment Agency to prevent people from becoming unemployment people work for reduced time and get a compensation for the loss of their salary from the state for a maximum of uh, two uh, of 21 months relating to the corona crisis and the advantage is that the staff will be remain in the office and and uh, can work full as soon as possible if the situation is, is better again so the economic uh, figures, I think, show us uh, there's only a small path um, between uh, health protection of our patients, health protection of our team, and a complete financial disaster for our dental practices in uh, this severe times. And uh, one advantage for us is that uh, the German Dental Association has agreed with a private health insurance companies in, in, in Germany to compensate the additional costs for protective equipment and hygiene while the corona uh, pandemic, uh, we call it uh, hygiene, a hygiene fee, um, it's fixed by nearly uh, 15 euros per consultation and the fee is payable for each treatment to compensate, uh, yes, the additional corona related expense uh, of the dentist and uh, but it's only valid for private insured patients and initial, initially limited until the end of uh, July. Um, finally, I, I want to give an, an outlook uh, for the next months, uh, always on the, uh, on the assumption that uh, we don't uh, have a second wave of uh, inf in infection. Um, Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the 73rd session of the World Health Assembly held from uh, 18 to 19th May 2020, the Federal Dental uh, 
Association, World Dental Association, the FDI, were given uh, a statement um, relating to, to point one, the FDI is uh, carrying out a global survey to understand the current guidance, initiatives and resources related to dentistry and oral health during the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, it is important for us to, to exchange these uh, experiences and to learn from, from each other. And to point two, the FDI says, uh, to protect the dental team, the security of the supply chain of adequate and cheap personal uh, protective equipment is urgently needed. And also scientific investigation, uh, investigation is needed to understand the real risk of aerosols uh, in the dental setting, uh, as well as the role of diagnosis and, and tests for a safer dental practice environment. And um, the third point, it is my point because I'm uh, responsible in my company uh, also for prevention and health promotion. It's a very important point, FDI says, said that oral prevention, early detection and dental treatment are key to avoiding an even bigger burden on health systems in the future. So if we come uh, from the global perspective to, to the national view, um, it's very important for us that we bring back our patients in the dental practice. That is what we want. And please remember uh, the economical, uh, economic facts presented before, I show you a decline of patient contacts between 15 and 60 percent in compared to pre-corona times. So a great challenge for us will be to, uh, to convince our patients uh, that dental treatment and dental procedures are safe. And the question is how we could do this. Uh, we have to, to communicate that we work under hygiene, uh, high hygiene standards always in the past now, and also in the future. And as you know, the aerosol emission and the potential uh, SARS virus transmission are big topics uh, in the dental community. And I'm sure that there uh, exist differences between aerosols relating to the virus load. Uh, the more active produced aerosols via crying and aerosols via singing and coughing have definitely a greater virus load than the passive produced aerosols uh, during the dental procedures. But important is uh, the reduction of aerosol emission before and uh, during dental treatment so far as we don't have enough evidence of, of the transmission quality and the virus load of the aerosols in dental practices. And that's why scientific investigations mentioned on the slide before is uh, so important. And I think our key message has to be dental treatment is safe under special conditions. And the patient can trust that we fulfill uh, these conditions. And at the same time, we must use the opportunity to highlight preventing strategies uh, that can avoid people needing treatment at all, avoiding a burden on health systems and therefore we have to focus also on, on prevention because prevention is better uh, than, than cure. And one way of uh, communication could be uh, um, PR campaigns to bring back the patients uh, in, the dental, in the dental office and the dental practices and that's why the, the German Dental Association, uh, my company, have currently launched a social media campaign. Uh, it's called, it's called to Welcome Back to the Dental Practice. And it is since one week active on the, on the common, media, uh, common media channels uh, like Twitter and uh, Facebook and Instagram. And you can see here some examples. Uh, this is a very simple and relatively cheap and very efficient and effective way uh, communication because uh, the information spread is uh, very big. And uh, last comment for the near future uh, in the role of dentistry during uh, an assumed second uh, COVID wave, 
in Germany, dentists cannot perform COVID-19 testing because the main focus of testing is uh, not dentistry. But uh, the German Dental Association demands for the outstanding uh, situation a COVID-19 uh, test by dentists, while in uh, legal exception, uh, exception uh, which is currently discussed in the German Parliament. And I think this is a good aspect uh, also to document the medical side uh, of our uh, profession. And uh, besides uh, some useful um, information uh, about uh, epidemiology, the epidemiology worldwide and information uh, for dentists worldwide, uh, you can use also uh, for Europe uh, the websites of the Council of uh, uh, European Chief Dental Officers or the website of the Council of European uh, Dentists. And uh, we have many, many uh, informations and uh, we should use this information. And um, my, last, uh, my last remark uh, is regarding um, the, uh, the reopening of, uh, of uh, social life. And uh, I, I observe in Berlin that uh, people are experiencing uh, second spring and they are going out again. Uh, they are shopping and sitting in the beer gardens. Uh, but I worry that they, that they will forget about the social distancing and then the pandemic may uh, flare up again. And uh, I don't want to go back uh, having, uh, to having a shutdown. It, it was truly a terrible time. So let's work together uh, to beat the virus. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ziller uh, and Dr. Paganelli. Appreciate both of you providing input about your personal experiences professionally uh, in your countries and sharing with this international community. Uh, before we get into questions, just, I just want to remind folks that this session is being recorded and you'll be able to view it uh, later on at icd.org. Um, first question, we've actually had several questions related to the uh, statistic um, that Dr. Paganelli uh, provided for us related to 16 dentists that have died. And if you look at, and I'm just pulling this out of, uh, from, from, uh, from the internet, uh, that the, the dentist to population ratio in Italy is about one to 1400. There are almost 34,000 deaths uh, so far in Italy. Statistically, we probably would have expected more than 16 deaths with community transmission alone. Um, is there any evidence that any of the dentists uh, that passed away were uh, infected during practice uh, or um, what information do you have on, on those dentists? Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you because I read this question in the QA and the, uh, of course, this is one of the first questions that was posed to me. And uh, this is the reason I've designed my, my presentation on the variety. So, Remember that dentists in Italy are not only trained with uh, 10 semesters of training in a dental school. Some are still human medicine trained and then with a postgraduate education in dentistry. There are over 57. I am 57, so this is the reason. I'm the first one to be trained only as a dentist and then as a medical doctor. In Italy, it was happening exactly the reverse. So there are two answers. Do you consider me as a senior dentist or not? Please don't uh, smile too much, don't, Jonathan, because I can imagine that you have the same uh, doubt. So, uh, of course, no one of the 16 died because of dental activity, but some of these were senior. Some of these were involved in voluntary work in the hospitals, and some were uh, medical doctor and dentist 
that were working with uh, general medicine as a background and still active in that field. So this is also part of the heterogeneity. As I said, I hope clearly, there is no one single point of view. Sebastian has clearly stated that this is what can be done in a regular way, but remember that we are not sure that uh, uh, all the 16 dentists that you can see listed on the order that is updated regularly. The order website is, of course, remembering them, but the only practicing dentists are two that are in my area. So they are between Bergamo and Brescia, and they were active in terms of people that were involved in active practice, but they were not contaminated because of this, because they were living in the most dangerous area. I hope I've, I've answered in the right way, Jonathan. There's no right or wrong way to answer things. Uh, Corrado, thank you. Um, for Dr. Ziller, a uh, question for you from Virginia. Um, how did Germany uh, reduce aerosols or minimize aerosols? Uh, and what did you do differently for patients that were COVID positive uh, versus negative in the chair? Um. Uh, we try uh, to uh, use, uh, or no, the recommendation is to use uh, uh, PPE and, and FFP2 masks, uh, visors, and shields uh, if we uh, uh, work with uh, aerosols. And uh, we use uh, high volume suction. This is strictly. Uh, strictly recommended, and uh, it's also recommend. Uh, it's not not recommend to avoid uh, aerosol uh, producing, but uh, mass, uh, to reduce to reduce it. And if you if you use uh, the the uh, turbines and, and the the hand pieces and the ultrasound uh, and the um, airflow and so on. Uh, you have to to use uh, the shields and uh, the visors and goggles uh, and also the FFP masks. Uh, the second question was uh, the to the differentiation between uh, COVID positive and COVID negative patients. Uh, what did, what procedures did you do differently with the patients in the chairs? Yeah, what we have a uh, we have a. Uh, a triage uh, before entering uh, before the patient entering uh, the uh, practice via telephone and uh, we ask for respiratory symptoms uh, we ask for COVID symptoms and uh, if, if there are symptoms uh, for respiratory disease uh, um, the, the dentist postponed uh, the treatment uh, in, when they are emergency treatment, then it's the separation uh, of the patients uh, in different rooms and um, um, a distance uh, in the reception, distance in the, in the uh, waiting area. And um, we have a plexiglass screen at the, at the reception. Uh, yes, like this. Uh, Dr. Paganelli, did you have anything to add about how you are addressing uh, yes, uh, Sebastian uh, uh, will forgive me. Uh, we are the uh, chief dental officer of Italy and Germany, but I like to quote Sarah Harley, that is the chief dental officer from UK. So maybe next webinar might be also involving uh, somebody from UK. I'm fully aware of how difficult was the situation in UK. So I just wanted to quote the fact that um, some of us are uh, suggesting that COVID positive patients might be conveyed in the acute phase in uh, hubs. So in uh, hospitals that are treating them 
uh, with a particular um, chance to have not particular PPE, but uh, as Sebastian has clearly stated, there are no particular rules. I mean, we are always treating our patients as they are HIV positive. So we are not knowing if it is active or not, the, the, the position. So the idea is that COVID positive patients might be addressed if it is possible to places where they could not generate more fear in the general population. I hope in this way is clear my ad. If, if you both could uh, address the recommendation of rubber dam use in your countries, if that is something that's being recommended uh, and is being utilized. Yes, of course. And this is part of the recommendations. Uh, and I think it is relevant to involve and get people aware of the fact that this is a good way forward for all of us. Sebastian, are you also in the same opinion with rubber dams being used? Yes, we have uh, also the, the recommendation, but it's not, not mandatory, but uh, it's, uh, it's uh, recommended. But uh, let, let me come back to, uh, to one point, the infection rate among the dentists and the dental staff. I think this is a very important uh, fact that we, that we have to, to clarify. Because in Germany, there's no obligation to report cases uh, by occupation. And, and uh, the Italian statistics um, and also the, the statistics from Wuhan in, in, in China um, shows that they are, they, the uh, infection rates are not higher than in the average. And uh, there are also UK statistics uh, uh, from the middle of April, and uh, there is no dentist uh, that has died of COVID-19. And uh, this is also um, a fact that we have to, to communicate. So it means uh, the dental practice is relatively safe, let's be honest. Uh, if I could just switch gears for a second, since we, we have about eight minutes left. Uh, could we talk about how dental education and uh, dental students are going to be trained? Uh, because we know that most dental schools around the world have open clinic settings uh, that, are, that are pretty uh, disadvantage, uh, disadvantageous compared to what we expect uh, to see in dental practices today. How, how, how are we going to educate dental students? May I say that we have no answer? <laughs> we don't have just now a, a clear single answer. I think that we have to collaborate everybody in view of what we, is feasible and what is affordable because we cannot swap from a structure that was meant to allow students to grow together to something completely different that maybe is nearer to what is the dental practice, but of course is not part of the education. The, we always have been trained that dentists should be working together in a team. And this can be learned through integration from the beginning, from scratch. This is my personal opinion, but I think that um, this is a discussion we have to develop in the near future because this is really changing the structure of the dental schools and then also the programs for the future. If, if I could uh, go on to ask a question of, of either of you regarding recommendations that are being made uh, related to negative pressure rooms, airflow, uh, UV, Air, uh, air filtration, HEPA air filtration, if there's any specific recommendations uh, that are being provided uh, in your countries right now uh, to dentists. Should I answer at first? Sure, absolutely. Yes, in Germany, we, I said it, we have, we have uh, uh, for reasons of health protection, uh, the, the uh, recommendation um, the formation and the spread of aerosols uh, should reduce, uh, 
should it use slash uh, avoided. Uh, and you have to use uh, a high volume suction and, and uh, if possible, also reduce uh, ultrasound powered hand pieces. So these are our recommendations. But uh, if we are honest, we have not enough scientific evidence about the virus load of the aerosol. So we need, we need uh, here clearly evidence. And uh, this is also a request uh, to the science. The science have to, to give us an answer. In terms of uh, the uh, availability of PPE in your countries, are either, are either governments providing or assisting with the distribution of PPE to dentists in Italy or Germany? No, uh, this was one of the big issue at the beginning. As Sebastian has clearly pointed out, it was very difficult. I must admit that I was very lucky because I was in the middle of the outbreak area. So that area was deeply supported by everybody. So I must admit that uh, collaboration has been already in place. And going back to what Sebastian has underlined before, I support what Sebastian said. No one in the dental practice has been uh, exposed. So this means that uh, the dental practice and the dental practitioners have always going, gone on with the normal practice to avoid any type of contamination. I strongly support what uh, Sebastian said. I just wanted to point out that we have no data about dental nurse and dental hygienist, and this is lacking in my view. Do we have any thoughts from either of you about the future of dentistry, whether it be in the next uh, 12 months to several years uh, and how that will, that will change permanently? As I said before, in Italy, what we have seen is that uh, uh, big groups are reconsidering dental uh, field as the best investment for their money. So this is up already happening because considering what is the increased cost, what is the length of treatment, length of uh, disinfection time, uh, they are reconsidering this type of event. So for sure, dentistry is going to change in Italy minimum. Yes, I think the same is also uh, valid uh, for Germany. Uh, I hope that we come back uh, to a normal situation and uh, that we that we not uh, will be confront, con, uh, confrontated with a second wave in the autumn or the winter time because the, this would be a completely economic disaster and not only a, a health or a disaster for the health, uh, also a disaster and not only for the dental practices or for the, the, for the whole economy. And uh, we are part of the economy, uh, part of, of uh, economy and our patients have to work, uh, they have to earn money, and uh, then also we can treat them and uh, can earn uh, our money. So I hope that we come back to another situation. Great. Well, I wanna thank both uh, Dr. Paganelli and Dr. Ziller for their time and, and their information expertise sharing with the, this uh, international community, Dr. Keneally for uh, the International College of Dentists hosting uh, a very informative session and, and, and hopefully continuing uh, these sessions to provide insights to dentists around the world about the impacts of coronavirus on the practice of dentistry and, and ensuring uh, safe dental practice. Again, this session is being recorded and can be seen on icd.org after today. And thank you to the audience members for uh, participating and asking uh, very, very good questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.